Oh, hey, <laughs> I didn't see you there. I'm just here with good old America. Didn't know you came into the 320 production studio. <laughs> this week we're wrapping up Ella Stuff of Stocking, so here's your recap on that. Hey, America, I'm Sam. River Bluff got the chance to give back to the community through Ella Stuff of Stocking. Each crew at River Bluff was assigned a child and donated daily necessities along with gifts for the holiday season. The donations of all the students at River Bluffs helped about 113 children, which is about 50 families. An estimated total of gifts that were given is about 1,476. Here are some thoughts about Ella Stuff of Stocking. I watched this last year and it was just awesome watching our student body come together and just create so much happiness for the children in um, this city, in this community. I think it's really important to give back to the community because um, when you give back you feel better on the inside about yourself and it's always better to give than to receive. I think one of the secrets of happiness in life is serving others and giving back and, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's, something, it's a great feeling about it, there's a, a great energy there when you get to help and love and serve others. Um, it's really special to me to be a part of something so big as, as Ella's Stuff of Stocking. You know, we started it last year and helped about 40 kids. Um, and this year we were able to grow the program and we were able to help 100 kids, um, over 100 kids actually. And so I think it's just really a great example of the students of River Bluff um, living out part of our motto of the do good. You know, the work hard, the get smart, the do good. And it really shows that do good part. And I think that, um, you know, the kids here are doing such a great job of honoring the memory of Ella Shoemate through this program and, and, you know, just making people happy, which is exactly what the Shoemate wanted when um, they started the foundation. River Bluff came together to help the less fortunate this holiday season and to keep LSU mate spirit alive. Here is what Mr. and Mrs. Shoemate have to say about their organization. We are so thankful that River Bluff has been able to help us with the Ella Stuff Stocking program this year. It is just so amazing and humbling to see so many people want to help others and it is just an amazing feeling to see them and to have them all participate and also to be able to keep Ella's spirit alive through giving to others. When Ella was killed, the first Christmas was really hard because it was the first time where we have a big family thing happening and she wasn't around. So it was a little bit painful, but then when we, we found that when we do things like this, not only does it distract us from Ella not being there, but then it also helps us feel like we're doing something positive. So by River Bluff taking this many kids and helping this many people, it keeps us really busy just coordinating all these families and when there are issues with the sheets, calling the families and finding out um, and clarifying for them, it, it takes a lot of time. So that keeps us busy, but then on days like today where we see the effect of what so many people can do, it makes the holidays something, not just something that we can bear, but it makes it something that we can really enjoy. The Yellow Stuff of Stocking program has helped over 280 families in the past three years. The Shoemates feel that Ella's spirit of love and kindness is alive with this program. Next weekend, February 12th to the 14th, Legally Blonde opens up. It's going to be in the pack at 7 p.m., not a.m. Don't come at a.m. You'll look dumb. Anyway, I'm in it if you want to come see that. That's exciting. I don't play the blonde, so if you wanted to see me in a blonde wig, that's fine. It's not going to happen, but you can take that up with Miss Dellinger. She's down the hall somewhere. G something. I don't know. Anyway, Legally Blonde. <laughs>
Oh my god, oh my god, you guys. What? We're rolling? Oh. Our theater department has done many shows this year, including The Crucible, and now, oh my god, you guys, we're doing Legally Blonde. River Bluff's theater department is about to showcase the musical Legally Blonde, but what is it about? about a sorority girl who is dating a fraternity guy in California. He decides that he's going to go to Harvard Law School and she's devastated because she thought that he was going to marry her. She decides, well, he must want a serious girl. She decides that she's going to go to Harvard Law School too and the drama unfolds from there. As they were preparing for the performance, the cast was so excited to tell us their favorite things about this production. Lots of energy, lots of fun, a little bit of pink thrown in. Um, with the show, well, it's really different for me. I've never really done anything like this. I've never had a lead. And, um, and then the cast itself is just amazing. We've got great dancers, great singers, great actors. And all the music is awesome. And the dialogue, it's hilarious. So I think it's a great show. What I'm most excited about the show is that I get to be with my great and amazing friends and uh, bring this amazing show to life. and let the great people of River Bluff High and parents of students of River Bluff High see this great musical. I'm really excited about being able to work with a whole new group of people and finish off my senior year with a great musical. I'm excited about seeing all the hard work that we put into this come together for an awesome performance. Oh my god you guys, wait, I almost forgot. When is Legally Blonde? It is February 12th, 13th, and 14th at uh, 7 o'clock in the pack. Uh, $7 for students, $12 for adults. This has been Grant Nicholson reporting from Gator Eye News. Oh, hey, America. I didn't see you there. Sorry I'm late for our date. Oh, man. Ha! Huh. You walked in on me and America having a good old time. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway. We're talking about the center, TV and video production, photography, technical theater, and music? This is the student workstation. There's 20 of these in this classroom. Each of them has an 88, 88 key hammer action keyboard. Uses a MIDI controller into the computer which runs Finale for notation software like this. So you can write your notes on manuscript paper. We also have ear training programs like Aurelia. This is the control room. We use Pro Tools 11 which is what the producers and recording labels use. We can record in there and then it'll transfer digitally into here and we can edit it however we want, and it's unlimited tracks. We use Canon cameras, Photoshop, CS6, and we use Lightroom 5 for our photo editing. We use speed lights and different lighting effects. Our classroom is divided into the like, classroom student area, and then we have studio space. The favorite part about this class is that I get to express myself and through the means of taking a photograph and creating an image. I signed up for the Media Technology Center because I was interested in film and the filmmaking process. And it's been something I've always been interested in. So it's been really fun getting into this and having these experiences. Ever since I was little, I always wanted to do something with film or anything, so I always acted. And now that I'm older, I've found that I enjoy um, editing videos and directing them. In media technology, we're using state-of-the-art equipment such as green screen, green screen lights, professional studio lights, DSLR cameras, tripods, and dollies. We're editing videos with Final Cut Pro X and Adobe Premiere Pro CSX, and we're also using Adobe After Effects CSX for special effects. Right now, we're on our way to becoming Final Cut Pro certified. This equipment is very much preparing us for future careers in the media technology field. In the music technology and recording area, level one courses include sound design and recording honors and digital music technology honors. 
Level 2 courses include Advanced Sound Design and Recording Honors and Advanced Digital Music Production Honors. In the Digital Photography area, Level 1 courses include Function of Images Honors and Photographic Technique and Functions Honors. Level 2 courses include Mixed Media Photography Honors and AP Photography. In the Television and Video Production area, Level 1 courses include Media Technology 1, Elements of Television and Video Honors, and Media Technology 2, Short Form Honors. In Level 2, students will take Media Technology 3, Long Form Honors, and Media Technology 4, Television and Video Craft Honors. All students in the center will take Fluid Design Honors their first year and Production Practicum Honors their second year. props and sets and we design the lighting and sound for the shows that we're doing. Right now we're doing the play Legally Bond and I'm making a skirt for it, I'm pinning it right now. If the actors are using mics you can control them all from here. Um, if you're playing a track you go over here and use the CD player. Um, this, is, this controls all the CD players in the stereo system here. Uh, right now I'm working on the lights for Legally Bond, like I'm setting in the light cues for different scenes. Like if I wanted to create a mood for one of like the romantic dinner scenes, that's what I'm working on right now. Level one courses include set design and stagecraft honors and sound engineering and lighting design honors. Level two courses include theater production workshop honors and computer aided theatrical design honors. Objection, your majesty. Order in my court. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about law, kids. The Center for Law and Global Policy Development is really centered on the idea of having hands-on learning opportunities. And one of the things that we do as level one is we really kind of introduce them to what we're going to be doing. So in law and justice, they learn how to do mock trials and moot courts. In current controversies, they learn how to debate and make arguments. And then in level two is when they get to do their externships um, and they get to go out into the community and learn to work with lawyers and with legislators and with judges to really see if they're interested in um, um, law and in politics. We do many different things in the center. The center is almost like a sample platter of and just gives you a taste of various different uh, career opportunities in not only the law field but just criminal justice as a whole. We get to do like mock trials, um, talk about hot issues like during that time. Policies, different issues, um, different problems in the in the world and in the United States specifically and especially like government and law related. It is a lot of work but it's totally worth it. Um, it's a lot of hands-on experience. We learn a lot with politics also with law. We've done mock trials, we've done moot courts, we've done Socratic seminars, we've written papers about just various different beliefs that we have or something that we really care about. We have written mock legislation. We've done many things and that's one of the great things about the center. It's not focused on one certain part of law. It's that global policy and law as a whole. If you want to do journalism, if you want to do writing, if you want to do politics, you're offered so many opportunities just in the center that you would never be op offered in any other um, classes you would take. We do externships, kind of are more involved in the community and kind of like preparing for our future in law. Check with your high school's guidance department to get more information about the Law and Global Policy Development Center at River Bluff High School.
Anyway, anywho, I, I don't really have a closing statement, so uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time they let me do this. Probably won't let me do it again, though. But that's OK, because I know we had a great time. Didn't we, America? Yeah, we did. Oh, see, America agrees with me. Miss Esposito. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. I am Sam. Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. I've heard that joke my entire life, and it never gets old. It never gets old. Doing in my swamp.